What is up guys? In this video we're going to be going over how we can use Python and Flask to create a website and host it for free on the internet. So just to demonstrate, I went ahead and created this very minimalistic website and let's actually go ahead and refresh it. So the first thing that's going to happen, it's going to take us to this home page. It says this is a home page and I have some JavaScript there. So you can see we can use JavaScript here. Then we have an about link, which will take us to an about page. And as you can see, we have navigation in our website. So this is very fundamental. And of course you can host much more complex websites with the knowledge I'm about to teach you. So this was just to show you that we can add these pages CSS and so on. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and create a new Python project. I'm using Python 3.9 for this. And you want to go ahead and open up the terminal. And inside the terminal, we're going to go ahead and type in pip install flask, because this is the framework we'll be using. I already have it installed, so I do not have to wait for it, but just make sure you go ahead and install that. Next up, you can see I have a main folder here and it contains two subfolders. One is a static folder for the CSS and the JavaScript, and one is a template folder for all of the HTML files. And then instead of main.py, we have app.py. It doesn't really matter what you call it. This is just where we will put all of the backend code for the direction. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and import from Flask. We will import Flask and we need to also import the render template. Next, we need to create an instance of app and that's going to equal flask with the name of the instance. So underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore. Now we need to create a root and a root is where we can define where the homepage HTML and the about page HTML will be placed. So to do this, we go ahead and type in at app.root and we need to define the endpoint. In this situation, the home page is just going to be a slash, which means if the person enters the website, this of course will be the first thing that pops up. It has no other words behind it because those will be reserved for the about page, for the settings page and so on, whatever pages you want to create. Then we can go ahead and create a function which is called home page. And inside here, we're just going to return and we have to type in render template and inside here, we need to actually return an HTML file. So we'll just go ahead and type in index.html and we have not created that yet. So this code is going to throw us an error. But inside templates, we can go ahead and create two different HTML files. The first one's going to be called index and the second one, of course, is going to be called the about page. So as you can see, it's just like a normal website structure. We have a template folder with two of these HTML files. Now let's go back to the app. Now it exists and when we load the page, it's going to show up. Well, let's go ahead and copy and paste this right under. And here we're going to add the endpoint of about. And of course you need to remember always to change the definition name. If you have home and home, those names are going to clash and the program's not going to function. Then of course we need to refer to about.html because that is the template we want to render. Now the final thing we should do is go ahead and type in main because we want to check if name is equal to main, we can go ahead and type in app.run. Now let's go ahead and test the app. We can go ahead and click on run and it's going to deploy the app on a local server. So if we click on this link, you're going to notice it's going to open up this blank page. And the reason it is blank is because in our index HTML, we did not specify any HTML yet. So here we can go ahead and type in home. And just to simplify this, we'll go ahead and create an H1 tag and say home. And we're going to do the same thing for the about page. We can just go ahead and type in about and insert an h1 tag that says about. Now if we go ahead and rerun the program, it's going to deploy the server again. Now we have a home page and just to test that the about page works, we'll go ahead and type in slash about. And as you can see, it's going to direct us to the about page. Now inside the static folder, we're going to go ahead and add some styles. So first we're going to go ahead and create a new folder, which is going to be called CSS and one is going to be called scripts. 
and we're going to create a script file here and it's going to be called scripts.js. So this is inside the scripts folder. And since this is not a JavaScript tutorial, I'm just going to paste in what I had earlier. As you can see, it's just a normal function that is going to change the element of example with this content over here, text changed. So this is just where you put all of your scripts. And of course, the reason I'm showing you all of this is because I also want to show you when we upload our website where you have to put your files. So it makes it a lot easier. But now we can go ahead and close the scripts file and we can go ahead and open a new CSS file. So we're just going to call this styles.css. So now we have a style sheet in the CSS folder. And just as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to copy and paste in some CSS. This is not necessary for your program to function, of course. This is just to show you that we can add CSS for our program. Then we're gonna to go to our index.html and we're going to link these two files, of course, to this HTML page. So of course, the first thing I want to do is insert the link that, that takes us to the about page. And this is just a link, as you can see, it has the href as slash about. That just tells the program that it can locally go to that page. And the slash about is also the same endpoint as the app root for about. Then for h1, I'm going to go ahead and add the ID of example. So I can change it with the JavaScript. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and add a button at the bottom. So as you can see, it's a button with the class of container. It has an on-click method of change text and it says I'm a button. But of course, none of these are going to work yet because we did not include our style sheet and our script. So we have to go ahead and include those. So to include a CSS style sheet, all we have to do is type in link and relative and that's going to equal style sheet of type text slash CSS. And the href is going to be set to slash static slash CSS slash styles dot CSS. So as you can see, the editor really helped us out with that part. And don't forget to add the angle bracket at the end, of course. So it's going to look something like that. Then for the script, all we have to do is define that we have a script with a source, which is going to equal slash static slash scripts slash scripts dot js. And that is the exact same path as we have over here. So as you can see, static scripts scripts dot js. Now, if we go ahead and rerun our program, we're going to have everything linked together. So if we click on about, it's going to take us to the about page. If we click on I'm a button, it's going to change the text of our home text. So the next step now that we have a website that's fully functional is to go ahead and search for Python anywhere because here we are able to actually host our scripts absolutely for free using Python. So I'm going to leave a link in the description to pythonanywhere.com. You're just going to have to create a user. It's completely free. I don't have to show you how to do that because it's very self-explanatory. And once you do it, you're going to end up on this page right here. But once you end up on this web page right here, you're going to notice a section called web. And we're going to click on that. And we're going to add a new web app. Since we're using the free version, of course, we're not going to have a free domain. So it's going to be whatever your username is, .pythonanywhere.com. And it's going to be available all over the internet. Then go ahead and select your Python framework, which is going to be Flask. We're using Python 3.9. Otherwise, pick, of course, your version. I will click on that. And here it gives us the chance to give it a name. I'm just going to leave it at that and click on Next. And once it has done that, it's going to actually create a template for us of a working website. So as you can see, we have the whole configuration page for my website. If we click on testcoffee.python anywhere, it's going to give you this page that says hello from Flask. Now you might be wondering where can you find that? And you'll find a section down here that says code and the source code. So the first thing we want to do is go to the directory because inside here, we're going to have to create a few more folders to simulate the entire website. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our Flask app. And as you can see, it's just a Python editor. And we're just going to go ahead and click on our app over here. Just copy and paste what you have inside here, delete whatever's in there and replace it. Then you can go ahead and click on save and the program is going to 
throw an error because of course we did not link any of our other files such as about HTML or index HTML. So we need to go ahead and take care of that immediately. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and right click on our main folder in PyCharm and we want to go ahead and open this folder in the finder because we need to know where we have it so we can use it. We're going to click on it and we just want to go ahead and copy the static and the template folders and just paste them in your desktop so you can find them easier. So now we can go back to Python Anywhere and we need to go ahead and create a few new directories. So the first one we have to create is the static directory. Perfect, go back to my site and we need to also create the templates directory. So we're going to take care of the templates immediately. Go ahead and click on upload file. We're going to go to templates and we can only do one by one in the free version. So we're going to have to live with that. That we can go ahead and upload the about HTML and we're going to have both of those now in the templates directory online. Then we can go back to my site and click on the static folder. But of course we have two static folders. One is for the CSS. So we're just going to create a new directory there. And inside the CSS, we're going to go ahead and upload our CSS. So go back to your folder that contains the CSS, click on static CSS and just import it there. Up next, we'll go back to static and we're going to create a new directory, which is called scripts. And inside scripts, we're going to, of course, upload our JavaScript. So back to static, open up scripts and import the scripts. Now, if we go back to my site, you're going to notice we have the static folder, the templates folder and our main app, which means we have everything linked correctly. And now we can actually go to our web tab and just reload our website. As soon as that's done, we can go ahead and click on our link. And you're going to notice that we have the website live online. And if you click on about, it's going to take you to an about page. If we click back, it's going to take us to the home page. We can click on this button and it's going to activate the JavaScript. Anyways, that was a very quick introduction to Flask and using Python to actually host websites for free on Python Anywhere. And it's also worth mentioning that you should stay active on Python Anywhere for your site to continue being hosted for free. As you can see right here, it's going to run until three months from today. This is a free version limitation and it's not really something bad because as long as you log back in before the three months have expired, you can click on this button over here, which is going to extend it for an additional three months. So it's a very small price to pay for a free website service with Python. And it's great for testing websites or if you want to show a demo or even make a portfolio. I definitely recommend this because it's so simple to set up. But with that being said, guys, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.